Hello, my name is Derek Scott. I'm a psychotherapist, a registered social worker and certified IFS therapist and I'd like to talk to you today about the personality system. And the reason I'm choosing to do this is because there is a tremendous amount of unnecessary suffering built on the understanding that we have a single personality and in fact the personality acts as a system. This is the work of my friend Dick Schwartz and I'd like to talk to you about how the system that is the personality operates. Firstly, I'll just say that this is pretty intuitive if you think about your responses to stuff. If someone says to you, do you want to go see a movie on Friday? You may say, part of me does, part of me doesn't. So those parts exist, you know they're there, and they're real. The nice thing about this system is it describes how those parts work for you. Before we get to the parts, though, I want to talk about an aspect of the system called self. Self, if you like, is your higher self, your best self, your true self. And self has the following qualities. Now, What's true is that we all have self-energy, we all have a self, and most of the time we tend not to work from that place. So, aside from being just a model of the personality, this also provides a method, the internal family systems method of working with the personality and the different parts that enable us to have more self-energy, to feel more peaceful, more calm, uh, less anxious, less depressed. Now the parts of the system can be broken down into parts that are exiled parts, they have big feelings, uh, big beliefs, extreme beliefs, and they tend to be young. And the protector parts uh, that operate to protect you from the exile or to protect the exile part from getting activated. Let me talk about exile parts first. When we're children, our systems can easily be overwhelmed with uh, trauma, by traumatic events, or by things like shame, right? if our parents have been shaming towards us. So, for example, if a parent says, I wish I'd never had children when you're little, and you overhear that, then you may think, oh, I shouldn't have been born. I don't deserve to be here. And if you take on that belief system, or rather a part of you does, it will get exiled to a corner of the psyche. Because it's too overwhelming to live with that belief day to day. I shouldn't exist. And you wouldn't be able to thrive. So uh, the psyche brilliantly exiles that part that then sits with the belief and feelings around that. Bad, bad, Leroy Brown. And that part, that maybe experiences shame, will try and get our attention. And that's what we mean when we talk about being triggered. If um, someone, as an adult, if someone says something to you which is unkind, or says, uh, I don't think you did that very well, you might feel this upsurging of shame. And when that happens, that's that part trying to get your attention. Exiles then hold these big feelings and big beliefs that, and they will try and get your attention because they want to be rid of these beliefs and feelings and come back to a more harmonious place in the system. Now along with these exiles we have protector parts and the protector parts uh, can be divided into two. Uh, in this model they're called managers or firefighters and what the managers do is they seek to prevent an exile getting activated. So let's say you have a part of you that's uh, ashamed of its body. And maybe when you were seven or eight years old, you were teased about being fat or thin or whatever. As an adult, you might be invited to a pool party in the summer. And uh, your manager part will find all sorts of reasons to not have you go to the pool party. Because that protector is concerned that if you're in a bathing suit, somebody might tease you. And if somebody teases you, it's going to activate this part of you that feels embarrassed about its body. Managers work very hard, they're very diligent, they're very um, good parts of the system for planning your life and ordering your life and making you look good and they're concerned with um, social mores and making sure that you present well in life. They don't want to risk this embarrassed part taking you over and maybe you're going to go red and maybe you're going to look, they think, like um, an idiot. So, so those are the manager parts. And they tend to operate with a critical voice. So when you hear that voice in your head saying you should do this, you shouldn't do that, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're too smart, you're too dumb, uh, whatever it's saying, it's because it wants you to look 
your best and it doesn't want you to present in a way that might bring judgment or condemnation into your system. They also like to figure stuff out and they like to think they're leading the system. Now, no matter how much manager parts these protectors worked to ensure that the exile parts don't get triggered and don't get activated, life has a way of happening and those parts will get triggered. You might watch a video which has uh, a scene in it with a kid being embarrassed or shamed by its parent. That'll trigger that part of you. And when those exiles get triggered, that's when the other parts come into play, the other protector parts called firefighters. And all firefighters are concerned about is to distract from the energy of the ex exile. They don't want you feeling ashamed or embarrassed or frightened or angry, or whatever the exile is holding. And so firefighter parts operate with what are often thought of as the common addictions. They'll, also, they'll use food, alcohol, anger, overwork. They may use sleep, um, cutting, spacing out. There's a whole manner of activities that firefighters like to use to distract from the energy of the exile emerging. When these firefighter distractions become chronic is when we think of it as uh, an addictive situation, so addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, whatever. Managers and firefighters, although they're both protectors, they don't support each other's behaviors. Managers are, of course, very critical of the firefighters because firefighters tend to make us look bad if you're exploding in rage, if you're getting drunk. Uh, and behaving in ways that offend people, your managers are going to have a, a, something to say about that. And often what happens is we hear these two voices very clearly in our heads. So perhaps you're at a party and something happens, an exile part's going to get triggered, so you start to drink a lot or you start to act in a way that brings untoward attention to you. And then you'll go home and the manager will say, I can't believe you did that, why did you did that? do that? And you're thinking, I don't know why I did that. Uh, and so these two will have a lot of air time. And then what happens is the exile doesn't get the attention as these parts are polarized in their, in their way of interacting in your head. So once you become aware of these different parts of you and how they operate, you can realize that none of them have a bad intention for your system. There are no bad parts. Parts that are using alcohol, drugs, rage, they're not bad parts. They're distracting from the exile. Managers that are telling you you should and shouldn't do things that are critical of you, they're not bad parts. They want you to look and present well so that they don't, you don't bring judgments into your system. Parts that feel ashamed or embarrassed, they're not bad parts. They, they need to be uh, unburdened from what they're holding. Boy, gonna carry that Exiled parts take on burdensome beliefs about themselves in response to external events. And because they've taken on these beliefs, they can also release them. They're not inherent. They weren't born with these beliefs. Everybody sing with free, 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 free. This process is called unburdening, and once these parts are unburdened from these beliefs, the protectors too can relax. The firefighters don't have to be so intense around their rage or their taking you out by sleeping or their food stuff or their alcohol stuff. The managers don't need to be so tightly in control of everything. And when they can relax, there's more self-energy available in the system too. And you unburden these parts by bringing self-energy to them. And there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do that by working with an IFS therapist. Uh, here's a website where you could find a certified IFS therapist near you. I may be available. You could work with me via Skype if you felt comfortable. Or you could work with your own system. And there's a video I've made which goes into much more detail about how to work with your own system. It's called Exploring Your Own System. It's on YouTube or on my website. The goal of this work is to be more self-led, to bring more self into your system, to experience life in a way which is more calm, which is more harmonious, and which is ultimately more enjoyable. If you found this video helpful or interesting, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a comment to indicate so. Uh, I hope it's been helpful and interesting. And if this has piqued your interest or your curiosity, um, have a look at some of the other videos uh, that are on my website. Thanks.